Are we live? We are live. How's it going, everyone? It's Jesse, and you guys are joining me today on Painting with Jesse, both here on Facebook and on YouTube. What are we doing today? We're going to be painting this awesome turtle family, little family of turtles, sea turtles going out into the ocean. So, hope you guys are all ready for that. We're going to give it a few minutes here to let everybody jump on. We are going to get moving pretty fast. Just want to remind everyone that I am live streaming this to both Facebook and to YouTube. There we go. I'm seeing some eyeballs pop up on my screen. It means that some of you guys are jumping on to the stream. Let me get over to the comments section here. Here we go. First comment, I'd like for somebody to let me know that you can hear me okay. Give me a mic check, an audio check. Let me know that you guys can hear me okay. What's happening, Kim Dasek Zook? How are you? Welcome to Facebook. Yep, you are on Facebook. You're watching from Facebook. What's up, Rosemary? How's it going? Could one of you please give me a sound check? Let me know that you can hear me okay. Say, yes, Jesse, we can hear you. Or if you can't hear me, I'm sure by now you would have already told me. But awesome. Thank you, Tabitha. Kelly Dallow says, audio great. Fantastic. So we are going to get moving here pretty quickly. Uh, maybe two, three minutes from now is when we're going to start painting. Want to let enough people jump on to the... Uh, live stream here. But I do want to remind everyone, as you can see already, I've got the turtles drawn on my canvas. If you haven't done that yet, you're going to want to do that first. You could either download stencils directly from the event page. I put the stencils for the turtles in the comment section, or you can email paintingwithjesse at gmail.com for those stencils. Obviously, if you're waiting for an email, I wouldn't send that to you until after we're done with the, with the uh, live stream today. Uh, the other thing that you can do, there is a pre-prep video where I teach you how to draw the turtles. Okay, that's uploaded. Uh, if you were to go on Painting with Jesse on Facebook, you would go over to the video tab at the top. There's a, If you look at the very top of the page, there's a, some tabs. One of them says videos. You click on that and you will see the pre-prep where I teach you how to draw these step by step. Okay, so... Again, just want to remind everybody that that's how we did this. We drew this pre-prep. Uh, pre when I do the pre-prep drawing, it makes it a little bit easier to, to focus on the painting on the day that we do the live session. I've found it's been a little bit of a better way to do things. Uh, however, you know, I know sometimes some people prefer to do everything all at one sitting. For something a little more complex like this, I've, I've found that doing them separately is a, is a good way to do it. Anyway, what's happening on Painting with Jesse? Good thing you guys asked. You guys always have asked the great questions. Let me see if I can share my screen here. Give me one second. Let me get over. I'm going to show you guys how to get over to, um, let's see, Chrome tab. Give me one second. Facebook, here we go. I'm going to share my screen, uh, my Facebook screen, and show you whenever you guys want to see what's coming up in uh, Painting with Jesse here at the top. So right now we're on my Painting with Jesse page. Hold on. Let me make sure that, uh, did I share the screen or did I not? Did I, not, did I share the screen? It doesn't look like I did. Hold on one second, everybody. I tried it here, and for some reason, it didn't take. It says, browser cannot access your screen. Try capturing a different screen to see if this continues. All right. Uh, some technical difficulties. Give me one second. We'll try that again here in a moment. Share. I want to show you guys how to access the um, future events on Painting with Jesse. Give me a second. Give me a second. We're going to try that one more time. If it doesn't work, no worries. Let's see. Okay, let me check back on StreamYard. There it is. So you guys can see my screen there. You see painting with Jesse. Uh, so I'm, I'm sharing uh, my screen with you there. What happens then is I'm going to scroll down here. So here I'm at the top of painting with Jesse. You guys all see this? So here at the top, you've got this home tab, which is what we're on right now. You got this live tab. If you were to click on that, it takes you to all of my previous live sessions. And there's over 100 by now. 100 different um, art tutorials, all right here under this live tab. Okay, if I was to go over here under videos, click on that, it's going to show you same thing, live videos, but also any pre-recorded videos that I've uploaded. Right here is where you would find um, the pre-prep drawing video for the turtles. Okay, again, if you haven't if you haven't drawn your turtles, you want to learn how to draw those freehand, you would go, you would click on here, and you will see the video at the very top up in here somewhere, right here. You see, I actually uploaded it 
two times. So you'll see it right here. Okay, but that's not what we're looking for right now. Let's get back over to that homepage. Oh, did I do that right? I sure did it. Went one step back too far. Okay, give me a second, folks. We're almost there. Bear with me a little bit. So here, we're back at the top here. So right here under the More tab, if you click on that, it's going to bring this drop-down window. So you got the Events, About, Community Photo, Edit tabs, right? That's not for anything, anything for you guys. But here under Events, if I click on that, it's going to show me all of the upcoming events for Painting with Jesse. Right here, Upcoming Events. We got the little uh, family, the turtle family painting we're going to be doing today. Wednesday, June 23rd, we're doing this little painting of the hope tree. I'm not going to click on that, but you guys can see that there's a little, I'm sure some of you already have already seen this cool little cute painting that we're all going to be doing together. Thursday, June 24th, 3 p.m. We're doing this little dinosaur, little kid centric uh, session. And then Wednesday, June 30th, we've got a, a um, prickly pear cactus painting that we're going to be doing. Now, Really quickly, back to the main painting with Jesse Page. I'm going to show you guys the calendar really quickly, if I can get over there. Okay, without messing too many things up here, let me hit the home button. It's going to take me to my personal page. We don't want that. We want to get back over to painting with Jesse. One more minute, folks. Promise. If I scroll down, there's our calendar. Okay, right in, right here. Don't know the date on it yet, but I'm going to be traveling to Mexico on vacation here pretty soon. And I will be live streaming from there. Uh, I'm not sure the exact date yet. I'll have that posted by the end of today. But we're going to be doing this little guy right here. Okay, again, hold on. Let me uh, let me get back to StreamYard and stop sharing the screen. Hold on. Let's find this. Or remove. Nope, that's not it. Right there. Stop screen. Boom. Okay. So this is what we're going to be painting when I'm in Mexico. Okay, there's... Uh, Every year, I don't know how many times a year, I don't know the entire history behind this, but there is a, a migration of monarch butterflies between Canada through the United States and then into Mexico. You guys see all the little butterflies out in the background. I've still got some things to add to this, a little bit of glitter, just a minor, a couple of minor refinements, but we're going to be doing this next week sometime. I'm also going to be doing, I'm going to try to do, to do two live streams from when I'm in Mexico. The other one's going to be this really cool sun moon combination. I did a poll a couple of days ago on my Facebook. Had a lot of uh, a lot of requests for both the monarch butterflies and this uh, sun moon painting combination that I've got to I've still got to design it, but I'm going to be do, trying to do both from Mexico. Anyway, that's what's coming up here on painting with Jesse. Okay, glad you guys asked. <laughs> Lots of good questions from you guys. But here we go. Let's get to uh, talking about the supplies for today. What am I going to be painting on? Well, I'm going to be painting on the 16 by 20 inch canvas, as I typically do on these lar larger paintings. It's my go-to canvas size. Uh, I paint with acrylic paint. For those of you that are new to the page, uh, sometimes there's a drawing component to my paintings, and then uh, there's a painting part of it, of course. That's why they're called paintings, I believe. But I'm going to be using acrylic paint. I've got a set of basic brushes here. Okay, I've got a one inch flat brush. Okay, I've got a little half inch flat brush. Actually, it's more of a, it's a little smaller than a half inch. I think it's a number 10 or number nine uh, flat brush. Pretty small little guy I can do details with. Okay, then I've got a little number six flat. Okay, a little uh, number six flat. I've got a filbert, a little small filbert. Filberts are known for having the little rounded head at the top, skinny edge, but rounded at the top. And then I've got a little pointy brush, a little skinny liner brush, little number zero. Okay, these are all, these are just suggestions. If you guys have anything similar, if you guys have something a little different, that's okay. As long as you've got a variety of brushes, you're going to be okay. Okay, then of course, like I said, we're, I'm going to be painting with acrylic paint. I'll go over the colors here in just a moment. We are going to start working with the background first. I'm going to start working that water in, and that's a combination of, of, of a blue and a white. Let me show you guys really quickly. I do try to um, recycle my plates, but the fresh colors that are on here, I've got some white and some blue, some dark blue. Okay, I'll be combining those in just a moment when we start painting that water in the background. Then I've got white, yellow, and brown. I'll be combining some of those uh, to create the sand color in the background, right behind the, underneath the turtles. 
after that, we'll start coloring the turtles and um, all of those colors are kind of obvious, but I've got some green, some pink, some red and some orange, some yellow, uh, a little bit of blue. This one also has some pink, of course, but I'll probably change that up a little bit, okay? Whatever colors you guys have are gonna be perfectly fine for those turtles. Feel free to customize your painting however you'd like. I always want you guys to get creative and feel if you feel like it. The goal isn't necessarily, necessarily to create an exact version of this piece, but uh, make it your own. Uh, don't stress out about the process. Have fun with it. That's Those are the main goals. Have fun with it and then uh, create something that you're going to enjoy. All right, but let's get moving here pretty fat, pretty quickly. Let me change the screen on this so you guys get, there we go. That's what we want right there, okay? Before we get started, let me know. For those of you that are new to the page, please let me know. Hey, Jesse, new to the page. I'm painting from so-and-so, wherever you are, whatever your location is, and then maybe who you're painting with, okay? If you're celebrating a birthday, an anniversary, et cetera, let us know in the comments so we can say, so we can congratulate you. And if you, of course, if you've been painting with me for a while, also say hello. So really quickly, let me run this down. The way I do this, I do a step on my painting over here, and then I give you a little time to impl implement that step on your end, okay? What we're going to do first is I'm going to start mixing my background color. In between steps, I'll look over at the comments, answer questions and things like that. But I'm gonna start with my big one inch flat brush. Okay, this guy right here. Okay, just if you guys aren't familiar with uh, this type of brush, it's known for it's kind of, a, it's almost like a square or rectangle head, right? If you look at it from the top, they tend to be pretty thin. These are synthetic bristle brushes that I'm using today. But I'm going to take some white first. I'm gonna start with some white, scoop up a bunch of this white. I have an extra plate over here. It's an old plate, it's got some dried up purple underneath it, no big deal. I'm gonna scoop up some of this white. Okay, bring it over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue. Okay, so I've got some blue and some white, same brush. Okay, so I've got my blue here, I've got my white there. I'm gonna mix both of those together. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna make so I've got a variation of blue. It's a dark blue here at the top and transitions slowly to a lighter blue here at the edge, right where the water meets the sand. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna create kind of a general lighter blue, the, probably something like this. So we're gonna start with that. Okay, and I wanna make sure I mix enough to cover most of my background there. I think that should do it, okay. I'm also, I'm gonna leave a little swirly, meaning I wanna see some blues and some whites in there, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to create a complete uniform one color. I mean, now I'm gonna go like this over here on the edge. Let me adjust my easel here a bit. Okay, so right here, I'm just gonna come across like this. This line's gonna come over my fin a little bit, my flipper, it's gonna come across, come over to the other side. I'm using the skinny part of my brush here, just like that. Then I carefully come around my turtle's head. For some of you that are newer to painting, maybe you wanna switch over to a smaller brush for this part. And then I just start to spread that paint across. I'm using these long uh, horizontal brush strokes, kind of following the pattern or the, the direction that the water's flowing in, right? So my lot, my, my beach line is kind of curved where the water and the sand meet. So there we go. We don't stress about anything here when you, when you paint with, with me, or at least we try not to. Take it easy, keeping in mind, especially if you're newer, newer to painting, that everyone's paintings turn out a little differently. Okay, I just want to stress that. If your blue is a little lighter than mine, if it's a little darker than mine, it's all good. As long as it looks like water, that's all that really matters. Now, if you notice what I'm doing is I'm creating, I'm already creating little lines within my paint. Because I didn't blend in my blue and my white completely, so it's all one solid color, the variation in the paint and the direction of my brush stroke starts create these, to create these little lines within that paint. Okay, those lines, I'm gonna use those to create the effect that there's movement within that water. So this is the first layer of paint and I'm already creating a little bit of movement within the water. 
And again, I'm keeping my brush strokes in the same direction. Long horizontal brush strokes for the most part. They do curve a little bit. There we go. Again, if you uh, if you haven't drawn your turtles yet, you want to go over to that uh, videos tab on the main painting with Jesse page here on Facebook, and you'll find the pre prep video. It's about thirty minutes or so of drawing. Um, it'll get you ready for the for this. Let's say that you jump on right now and you're like, oh my gosh, you know I don't have my turtles done. You can go find that video, draw your turtles really quickly. Then you'll want to go over to YouTube. On YouTube, oh, I forgot to mention, sorry, really quickly. Paper towels, they come in handy. Good for cleaning up messes, but also to help keep brushes clean. Okay, so you want to have some paper towels handy. I also have some glitter and some sequins. I'll show you guys those here in a little bit that I'm going to be using to uh, put on the shells, my little turtle's shells. Glitter and sequins. Okay, but anyway, what was I saying? So you go watch your, the pre prep video, draw those turtles, and then come back over to YouTube. On YouTube, you're able to back up the live video and start it from the beginning. Facebook does not allow you to do that. Okay, you can only do that on YouTube. So wherever we are during the live session, if you go over to YouTube, you can start it right back from the beginning. Okay, on Facebook, you have to wait till the um, session's over before you can go and watch the recorded session. Okay, I like to paint my edges on my canvases. Some people don't. So here I am, same color that I used for my water. I'm just coming through here and doing my edges. I'm almost done here. I'm going to give you guys about two minutes to get caught up on this step. This is the first layer of paint for the water. I am going to be adding a little bit of that dark, darker blue in just a bit. I always like to hit, take a little step back and assess my painting from a slight distance, two, three feet back. It gives me a better view of everything, makes, makes it easier to see any, any um, areas that I need to make adjustments on. So from time to time, take a little step back, look at your painting from a distance. You're better able to assess what you've got. Okay. But all right, take a couple of minutes there. I am going to be going back to using my big brush here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it on my plate for the moment. If you're new to acrylic painting, you don't want to let your paint brushes dry on you. Every time you use a brush, when you're done using it, if you're not going to be using it for a few, for, you know, for a little while, a few minutes or whatever, you do want to have a rinse cup or another, uh, another container with water in it where you will take your brush and let it sit. Okay, I didn't mention it at the beginning. This is another piece, of, another one of the uh, supplies that I use. I'll have a cup, some water in it. I use this as a rinse cup. I do have another container over behind my canvases where whenever I rinse a brush, I go and lay my brush here on it at an angle in some water. Okay, but for now, we're going to be using that brush again here in just a moment. So I put it back on my plate for now. But all right, so who's with us today? How's it going, Gloria? Yep, it's cute little turtle family, huh? Cool. Hi, Penny. See, let's see. Penny says, I like doing flat canvases because I seem to make such a mess with the other. Yep, some people like the flat. Some people like to use the canvas boards, right? Instead of actually using an actual canvas, some people will use those canvas boards. It's basically a real similar surface to a canvas, but uh, they tend to be harder. They're harder surfaces. They're flat. You don't have the the uh, dimensions that a canvas board, an actual canvas does. What's happening, Jesse from Maine? Just watching to see how it is done. Fantastic. Yep, some people like to do that. They like to sit and watch first, right? Get to see how everything works out. And then uh, they'll come back later and watch the recorded session. All good. Okay, recorded sessions are perfectly good to watch with, on top of which you can control, you know, the speed, you can pause it, you can back things up, et cetera, et cetera. So not a problem. Also, watching it, watching it first allows you to, you know, allows your brain to kind of process stuff, and then you can always come back, and you have a better idea when you when you attempt it, when you actually attempt the uh, painting. So here we go, back to my palette here with the dark blue. I'm just going to scoop up some of this blue, 
cleaned up my brush a little bit, meaning I just used a paper towel to take out the light blue that was on there. My, my uh, canvas is still a little bit wet from that paint below it, the light blue paint that we just added. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna go ahead and add this layer of dark blue. Now the two colors are gonna start to mix a little bit. I'm not worried about that. That's gonna help out. It's gonna help a little bit actually. Slight blending between the two colors, right? Gives you some variation in those colors. And then I just lightly bring this layer down on my painting. The water is a, you know, it's kind of, it's doing this kind of curved thing. So I'm bringing, whoops, I just scooped up some brown by accident. Don't want to bring any brown paint into my water. I'm going to bring this down. Let's see, how far down am I going to go? We'll go down about right there. Then I can start bringing this paint over. Kind of like that. Okay, there we go. Now right in here on my edge, if I want to blend that a little bit, so the two, so this darker edge and the light blue part of the water, I'm just going to remove some of the paint from my brush. So I've got very little paint left on here. And I'm just going to take, take my brush, I'll start a little bit higher up, and I'll start to bring this down just lightly, little tiny bit. Now I'm using paint that's nice and flowy, meaning it's, it's almost, um, it's not liquidy, but it's kind of liquidy. There's other paints that are a lot thicker, uh, a lot harder to, uh, to manipulate. Acrylic paints come in different thicknesses. And sometimes it helps, often it helps, to add a little bit of water to your paint or to your brush before you dip it in the paint. For example, this is my brush, right? I'm, I just dip it into my water cup. You could, if you have a little bit of paint on a plate where you made a mixture or whatever, you can bring that water over with the brush and mix it into your paint. Or you can simply dip your brush into the water cup and then just dip it right into your main paint palette the paint on your palette, you scoop it up. Now that water that's in there is gonna mix with your paint. I typically like to do it where I blend the water in first and then I bring it over to the canvas. Again, that's not a necessarily necessary step for my painting because uh, I do have paint that's a lot flowier, more, more liquidy. Okay, so. It's a more flowy paint. I'm just using this blue. I'm coming up over the top, coming over the side, just matching up what's on the front of my canvas. I typically will bring it around to the edges. Typically, not always, just a choice. Okay, and I can see right now that this here isn't dark enough to match that. I'm not concerned about that because once this dries, I can come back over and add some more blue right over the top and it'll make that area a little darker, okay? Awesome, Lynn, working with watercolors. Fantastic. It's fantastic. What's happening, Ivy, in San Diego? You're about an hour and a half south of me. As a matter of fact, I'll be in San Diego on Thursday, Thursday evening. So hello to you out in San Diego, one of my favorite places to visit. Pam Burleson, how's it going? You got it. My pleasure. Christina, let's see, new to the site from Toronto, Canada. Paige, Emmett, and Megan. Fantastic, Paige, Emmett, and Megan, welcome. Welcome all the way from Canada. All right, so same brush. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna come in here with the edge of my brush. I'm still working with that skinny edge. Well, I'm back to working with a skinny edge. Little bit of paint on my brush. Don't need a lot for this step. Still working with that dark blue. I'm just going to come in here and start adding some of those little lines in here that are eventually gonna be, we're gonna turn these into little waves or ripples in the water, okay? So just kind of a little random. There's not a whole lot of uh, thought in here. I just want to make these little lines. When we add some of those white accents in there, the little foamy parts, it's gonna help this look more like uh, movement in the water. Little tiny waves just kind of rippling across our ocean as it's getting closer to our turtles. Over here, just a little bit. Maybe a little lighter, those might be a little thicker than what I want, that's okay. We can work with that. Maybe over here, a slight curved one. Just gonna add a little more up here. 
remember, just a reminder, you don't have to try to match my piece exactly. Wherever I put a brush stroke doesn't mean that that's where you have to put one too. Okay, there we go. Let me take a little step back. Look at my painting from a distance. Make sure I've got everything that I want where I want it. I think we're pretty good so far. So for these little lines that I'm adding in the water, there's very little paint on my brush. Very, very, very little paint. And you notice when I started this part, I didn't go back and add any more paint. I'm exhausting using up all the paint that's on the tip of those bristles. Okay. So even like right now, you probably aren't able to see that I'm, there's so little paint that's going onto that canvas. It's probably a little difficult for you guys to pick it up on the camera, but there is a little tiny bit of this that's being added to the, to the canvas as I, as I lightly glide that brush over the top of the canvas. Okay. Again, we're setting up, we're setting up the base for what's eventually going to look like water when we add all those a few little extra things in there okay so for now i'm going to take my brush i'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to finish those up my brush is going to sit in my water cup just for a little bit i'm going to go back to using this brush in, in just a bit when we do the sand okay but i'm going to let this sit in here i'm just going to rinse it out a little take out some of that light blue we don't want that light blue or any or any of this blue that we just worked with to mix in with the colors for the sand it will make them It'll make it green. We don't want green sand. Well, maybe you do. You want green sand? That's okay. But uh, for me on my end, I'm going to try and make it look like kind of a yellow-brown sand. All right? But all right, everyone. Hi, Nancy. So Nancy asks, I miss, said I missed the first 24 minutes. minutes. Will I be able to watch this from the beginning? So there's a couple of things you can do, Nancy, if you want. If you head on over to my YouTube channel. This is actually being broadcast to the YouTube channel at the same time. On YouTube, you can back up a live session and start it from the beginning. Okay, so you can do that now if you want. Same name uh, as on Facebook, Painting with Jesse. Okay, so jump over to YouTube. You can start the video right from the beginning and you're good to go. Otherwise, you can wait till the live session's over. I am recording the video it will be uploaded to both Facebook and to YouTube immediately after the live session is done, and you can watch the video there. Now, if you need to do the pre-prep, which is the drawing part of it, if you haven't done the drawing part of it yet, you can go find the pre-prep video. Uh, I uploaded it, I think it was on Sunday, I believe, maybe Monday, Saturday, I don't remember now, but there's a pre-prep video for the drawing part of it. You'll find it on Painting with Jesse here on Facebook under the videos tab at the top. You click on that, scroll down a little tiny bit, and you'll see the pre-prep video there, okay? All right, let's see. Who else is on with us today? Marianne Rideau, how's it going, Marianne? How are you? Let's see, let's see, just scrolling through um, the comments just to see if I missed any questions or anything like that. What's happening, Madeline Bird? Christine Hubbard, what's up, Christine? I haven't seen you for a while. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so everybody, Christine was one of the very first people that started painting with me back in 2021 during COVID. Wait, 2020, 2020, not 2021. 2020, we're in 2021. Uh, so back in 2020, I started doing videos, live sessions here on Facebook in April. And Christine was one of the early birds. So I uh, just want to say hi really quickly. Hope you're doing great, Christine. Hope you're still painting. Okay? Can't stop painting. You're good at it. And uh, like for most of us, it's therapeutic. Got to, gotta, you know, continue painting. Tina from Alabama, painting by herself. All good, Tina. You are not by yourself. You're painting with all of us. Okay? I know it's uh, not the same, but it is, uh, you know, like we're painting in a nice big group. So welcome to you. Let's see who else. Kim Dasek Zook. I did say hi to you at the very beginning. I think yours was the first comment that I saw, I think. Don, how's it going, Don Wax? Awesome. All right, everyone. Let me get back to, um, back to our little turtle painting. So here we go. Here's what I'm going to do next. While all, all of this is drying, while what we've already created is drying, we're gonna start working on the sand, okay? Now, 
let me talk about that sand really quickly. I created these colors by mixing some white, primarily white, a little bit of yellow, and then a little bit of brown. You're gonna, saw, you're gonna see me mix the colors here in just a moment, but a couple of tips that I want to make sure you guys all pay attention to. So it's primarily white with some yellow in it, okay, a little bit of yellow, and then even an even smaller amount of brown. When you start to introduce your brown into your mixture, you want to make sure that you're using a little tiny bit at a time. The darker the color, the more pigment it has. So it overpowers the lighter colors very quickly. So you wanna slowly introduce that as you go. Now watch me do it really quickly for those of you that um, are newer to painting, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate. So let me grab, give me one second, let me grab another one of my little plates here. Uh, like I said, I like to recycle plates, I like to use them a few times before I end up throwing them away. I've got this plate right here. Now this is all dried old paint on here, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, same big brush that I just used a moment ago. I'm going to grab a lot of white, big scoop of white, and I bring it over. Let me do that a couple of times. Big old scoop of white, bring it over. I want to make sure that I make enough to cover all of this area around the turtles where the sand is going to be. So again, primarily with this mixture, we're going to have white to work with. Okay. Now, next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some yellow. Not a lot, a little bit of yellow at a time, something like this to start with. So a lot more white than we've got yellow. And then I bring the yellow over and I start to introduce it slowly into this mixture. So a little bit at a time. We're making almost like a really creamy, really light yellow. Now I'm not swirling it. I'm not going to completely blend these two colors. I want there to be a little bit of yellow. Some areas are a little more yellow, some areas are a little bit more white, kind of peeking through. Now what I'm going to do is I've got a lot of brown on my canvas, on my palette here, a lot more than I'm gonna need. I'm just gonna scoop up a little bit. Okay, start with a little bit at a time. I just put some there on that corner. The less, the better. And I can bring it over to the side of the plate first before I introduce it to the actual mixture. And then I can slowly start to add this. Again, you go slowly. You add too much, I just grab some more, and you're gonna very quickly turn this color really dark. And it's okay if that's what you're looking for, right? Some sand, there's, there's light sand, there's dark sand, there's white sand, there's different colors of sand in the beaches around the world. Kind of up to you. But either way, you wanna kinda of go slowly, and you make your mixture. Now I'm gonna take a little bit more yellow. I'm just working this slowly a little bit at a time. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm creating the base color for my sand, which means that I'm going to put this down first and then I'll come in with another layer later. So slowly mix it so, till it starts to look the, like the color of sand. And you'll, you'll start to notice it, right? You'll start to pick it up. If you, for those of us that have been to the beach, I'm, I'm, assuming, that, I'm assuming that most of us have or you've uh, been to the desert, desert sand is kind of similar to beach sand, okay? Little by little by little, you'll get it to the point. Lastly, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of brown and yellow together and just kind of really quickly put that in there. Again, I'm not blending these colors completely. I want there to be a little bit of a swirliness in there. Okay, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown. There we go. Once I've got this creamy, color, some browns in there, some white, some yellow. I'm going to go ahead. Here's the tricky part. Because I've already got my drawing on here, I have to find a way to work my sand around my turtles. Before I worry about that, I'm going to start here at the bottom and I'm just going to start painting with these long horizontal brush strokes. Again, same thing as what I did with the water. Sand tends to be a little smooth, right? Now you don't have to do it like this. You can make yours choppier by doing a little crisscross pattern with your brush strokes, or you can do vertical ones as well. But I want my sand to be nice and smooth. If you see some browns in there or some yellows peeking through, little streaky lines, all good. So I'm gonna come up here. Now I'm gonna start doing this. 
around my turtle, pulling. I start on the edge, and then I pull it out. Start on that edge, pull it out. Okay, I could outline my turtles first, do like a complete outline on my turtles. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's say, for example, right here, I want, I want to outline my turtle first. Might make it a little easier to stay within my lines. Okay, and then I just come right up with my brush, pull away, maintaining that horizontal brush stroke pattern. Here are my little guy. Now I'm using a really big brush in comparison to the size, like especially of my little turtle. So I've got to be careful. If you happen to get some paint over your turtles, no big deal. You can easily wipe it right off. Paper towel, just paint right over, just right over the top of your turtle and wipe it. Just be careful if you did this in pencil that you don't remove your pencil or you don't smudge it. So be careful if that's what happens. But again, just being careful, working my brush around. In a little bit, I'll come over with a smaller brush and tighten things up around the turtle. But again, when I'm just taking my brush, pulling to the sides all the way around. There we go. Okay. So right over here. Other side. And we just keep doing this all the way around. Okay, being careful, working our way around the edges. Now, normally, normally, if I wasn't showing you, if I wasn't demonstrating how to draw uh, like I did on the pre-prep video, I would normally go through and add my sand color layer in first before I painted my turtles, before I drew my turtles. Okay, so I would do the sand. It's a little easier to do when there's nothing to work around, right? Just all plain white canvas. I just work my horizontal brush strokes all the way across. Then I would draw my turtles over them, over all of that. But I was demonstrating the drawing part of it. Wanted to do that on a blank canvas. Also, the other thing that's tricky on this, because my turtle is partway in the water, that turtle up on top. If I was to paint my water first and then the sand first, and then I drew the turtle over the top, this area right here above the head would all be blue, okay? And then the bottom below that would all be the color of the sand. And when I paint my turtle, I'd have two different base colors to work with that might interfere with those colors um, that I'm trying to get the turtle, you know, the colors that I'm trying to get the turtle to be. So again, if I had laid down the blue first, then the sand color, and I drew my turtles over that from right here up, would be blue underneath the turtle's head, and then from here down would be the sand color. So I'd have to, might have to get creative with how to color those two, color that area without having the blue underneath bleeding through and changing the color above. You always have to be conscious of the color underneath because it can affect the color above it. All right, so let's keep working here. Anyhow, I'm looking forward to uh, live streaming next week from my vacation. We'll see how that goes. Checked in with the Airbnb places that we're staying at, and supposedly their internet should be able to handle everything, no problem. So if anything, and I happen to not be able to live stream, I'll record the session and then upload it. And then you guys can watch the uh, recorded session. But it'll be more fun if I can live stream. That'd be pretty cool. Going to a place that I've always wa I've been wanting to visit for a long time. One of the stops is called San Miguel de Allende. It's, a, it's in central Mexico, and um, it's a really pretty city. Very colonial, very artsy, a uh, lot of beautiful scenery. They've got a, from what I understand, they've got a really uh, big art scene. So I've been wanting to go visit that place for a long time. And uh, so that's one of the stops. We'll spend a few days there. Lots of pit, uh, picturesque 
locations. But all right, now I'm taking my, my sand color and I'm just bringing it around my edges. Now I'm going to trust, even though I'm not, I can't see what's happening on that side, I'm going to trust that I'm covering this all the way from top to bottom. And if not, no big deal. I can always fix that later. Okay. I'm not worried about the bottom edge here, down here. I'm going to do that at the very, very end of our session. I don't want, um, I don't want, if I do it now because I'm on an easel, it can glue the canvas onto the easel and it might be a little tricky to remove. Okay. Oh, there we go. Jesse asked a question that I think I answered probably, she probably asked it right before I, uh, before I, I talked about it. Yes. So it's an easier process. Let me kind of go back to that. It's an easier process if you do your background first and then you draw the turtles above it. Now, if you plan, and I'll kind of go over this again, if you plan on putting your turtles partway into the water, kind of like this one is, and partway underneath or on the sand part, you're going to have blue up here and then the rest of this would be the sand color. Uh, might be a little tricky to get your turtle to be all one uniform color if that's what you're going for, simply because the blue underneath it is going to change whatever color you put on top of it. Let's say, for example, that I was putting, I was making a yellow turtle, like the yellow head on that one. Above where the blue is, that yellow is going to turn slightly green. And then down here, where the sand color would be, it would be easier to make that look yellow. So that you might have to contend with that if you are putting a turtle part way in the water and part way out. The easy way around that is you put your turtle either, either all the way in the water or all the way out. Or you just take a few extra steps to get your colors nice and uniform um, if you do do a turtle that's part way. Okay? But all right. Again, this is the first layer of paint in the sand. I will likely be doing one more. But um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take one of these smaller brushes. I'm using my little number six flat brush and I'm just going to scoop up some of this sand color. Whoop. And there goes my mix, my mix plate. Let me pick that back up. And I'm just going to use this to come in here and come in right around the edges where I missed. I wasn't able to get my brush close enough. So I'm just going to touch this up a little bit. In just a moment, we're going to start with our next step. And that is we're going, to be, we're going to start adding some of this white in our water up here to start making it look like, you know, breaking waves or a little foam in the water. We're going to start adding those. This is all dry now, so I can go in there and add more detail to it. Wet paint over wet paint is good when you're trying to blend, but sometimes you have to let a surface dry before you come back and add more detail over it. There's different techniques to painting, right? Different processes. I like to mention this all the time during my sessions because I don't want anyone to sit there and ever think that there's only one way to paint. There's so many different ways that you can achieve similar results with different processes. Okay. Blending can be done. It's easier when paint is wet to blend, but it can be done when paint is, is dry. You can come in with another layer over a dry layer and blend, create a really nice blending of two colors. From what I've seen, most people, most artists like to blend when the paint is wet. So, all right, there we go. So you got about a minute before we move on to the next step. RJ Taylor says, oof, we've missed a lot. So don't worry, RJ. Um, if you head over to YouTube, find the live session there on YouTube page with the same name, Painting with Jesse. You're going to find the live stream. You can back it up all the way to the beginning, okay? Sakshi, how's it going? How are you, Sakshi? Nikki Peck, hello to you. Awesome, Christine. Tino says, cooking dinner. Woohoo! Cooking dinner while you're listening to a little bit of painting in the background, going on in that background. Let's see, Melissa Ramirez says, Mila's. Mia's, okay, Mia's first time joining in, our, in on an art class. Awesome, welcome Mia. Thank you for coming and painting along. Hope you're having a good time so far. But all right, you guys got about two minutes and then we're moving on. All right. Again, don't forget in between steps, folks. 
you'd like to uh, leave your brushes in water, okay? Don't forget that step. If you're painting with acrylic paint, if you're painting something else, water colors, et cetera, rules are a little different. Oil colors, right? Or if you're using oil paint, I don't think anybody's using oil paints today, but some of you might be. It's what I started with. I love oil paints, painting with oil. Those take a long time to dry. So just I'm just cleaning up my brush a little bit. What I do to preserve my brushes, I put them in at an angle. So I've got a little bit of water inside this uh, tin. Tin container, not the best option to use because it does rust if I leave water in there. But as a temporary place to put my brushes in, I have a little water in there and then I just put my brushes here on the edge. If I'm not using a brush or I'm not planning on using it anytime soon, that's what I do, okay? All right, Tina, sounds perfect. Exactly. Yeah, no worries. No worries. I understand. I noticed some people like to watch watch or listen to the session first and they come back and paint later. That's a good way to get, you know, the processes down or get a better understanding of the processes. But all right, here we go. What I'm going to do now is I've got my half inch brush here. Half inch flat. Again, if you don't have a half inch Actually, this is uh, this is in a half inch. This is more like a number ten. I can't see the numbers on here anymore. So, but it's about a half, close to a half inch brush. So, I'm going to take more of my blue. Let me go ahead and pour some of it out. I'm going to take some of this blue here, put some on my palette really quickly. I'm just going to use this before we start adding in any of the little foamy stuff. I'm just going to pick up some of this like this, and I'm going to come in here and start adding. So even though this is, this is the same color as um, what we started with, when I layer it on top of itself, it makes it, it creates a darker shade, right? So the first layers are, are contending with the white of the canvas. So anytime you put a color, no matter how dark it is, with, with few exceptions, there are some exceptions, normally the color above it the color that you're putting on your canvas will take, will lighten up a little bit because of the white canvas. Acrylic taint, paint tends to be transparent. So especially if you're doing a thin layer of paint, it most definitely will take on a lighter look because of the color of the canvas. There are different colored canvases. You can get black canvases, for example. Those are pretty cool. And uh, you don't have to contend with that, with the white canvas, but then you have black to deal with, right? So anyhow, what I'm trying to say is the more you layer a particular color, the darker and more even you're going to get that to be. So I do want a little bit of a transition from a darker to a lighter, so even within the darker part. So I'm mostly concentrating this layer towards the top part. Okay. And if I want, even though I've already colored my edges, I can bring this color around to the edges. I'm not too worried about that. And then once again, just gonna take a little bit of this blue off. So I've got a touch left on these bristles here. And I'm just gonna come over and uh, just touch up further, refine some of these little areas in here. I do want some variation in here. So some of it can be a little darker, some of it can be a little bit lighter. In just a moment, we're gonna start adding some water, uh, the foam, white parts. And that's gonna make all the difference in the world, okay? So, really quickly, just gonna rinse my, my brush here. RJ Taylor says, line it with a shower cap. Let's see, not sure what that means, line it with a shower cap. <laughs> line what? Line what with a shower, uh, shower cap? RJ, elaborate, please. All right, so taking a paper towel here, just going to squeeze out the extra uh, water that's in my brush. Okay, just kind of gently. Don't want to pull on the bristles or I'll, I can remove them. I can pull them away from the actual uh, brush, right? So here we go. Just going to scoop up some white paint. Don't need a lot for this step. Okay, now I'm just going to come in here and do this right around the edges of some of my blue here that I've created. I'm just gonna start just kind of scumbling my brush, creating some of that foamy stuff. 
Oh, line the water tin with the shower cap. There we go. Yes, love it. That's a great idea. Great idea. I was just thinking I'm going to go and grab a um, grab a uh, plastic one, a little plastic bin. But yeah, I think that's a great idea because I like the look of the tin. Besides, you get to repurpose it. But yeah, that's a great idea. Line it with a shower cap. Got it. Got it. So you guys also, so here, here's what's funny. So there's a delay in the video. As I'm sitting here doing this, you guys are seeing it about 20, 30 seconds later. So oftentimes when you guys make a comment, when I read it, there's that, there's also a delay. There's a look like a paw, not, I'm sorry. There's that delay that causes, you know, um, when I look at it, uh, I don't, I don't see it real time. So I, I have to try and remember what we were talking about a few seconds back and sometimes it'll make sense and sometimes it doesn't, but anyhow, yeah, I get you. So. I'm using the edge of my brush here, still kind of just lightly patting my brush around. You can use a little circular pattern as you come across. Some of it's going to be nice and skinny. But I like that idea. I like it. Okay, so again, up in here. Very light, very little paint on my brush. Again, remember, if your paint is really thick, you can add a little bit of water to your brush or to the paint itself to make it flow a little bit more. All right, let's see. Which way am I going to go up with this? All right, I'm going to bring it up. So I'm twirling my brush a little bit. Let me give you guys a close up here. So as I'm coming across and creating this, I'm just kind of doing this. I'm twirling my brush. Some lines can be really thin like this one and other areas you can make thicker lines. Okay, and then little, little lines that veer off. Kind of like that. And then you just work that little by little. Take, take a moment to take a little step back and away from your painting, right? Gives you that perspective. Okay, let's see. Maybe I'm going to come over here. I'm using my pinky. All this is dry down here. I can place my pinky right onto that canvas. Stabilizes my hand a little bit. Maybe I'll add some right here over the top. Okay, maybe a little over here. Now, these areas over here, there's some, there's some spots that look a little bit more intense, like here, here, in comparison to some of that, this that's over here. Once this dries, I can come back and add another layer of this paint on some of these spots, intensifying the white and giving my water a little bit of dimension. Okay, don't worry about it too much. If your paint at the moment looks a little bit too transparent or almost opaque, once this dries, we can come back and add another layer and that will make your white a lot more intense. Okay, so let me take a step back. All right, kind of like what we got. Now what I'm going to do is this. Okay, so I've got my, I got my paint here. Just gonna bring some over to the side of the plate using the side of the plate here. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to dip it into the water. So I'm going to bring some of that water over. Maybe I'll do it a couple of times. So I dip my brush in water, bring that over. Okay. Now I'm going to, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm thinning out my paint, making it more transparent. So I'm just going to remove some of it from my brush. So I don't have a lot on here and I'm just going to come in here and using the broad part of my brush, Okay, and I can use my finger to spread that across, or I can even use a paper towel. So all I'm doing is now I'm using kind of the broader side of the brush. Spreading that. Here it is with a towel, just lightly right over the top. I'm just creating variations 
in the water, changing some of the colors uh, a little bit, right? It gives, it gives the water a little bit more depth, more dimension. And just play with it a little. A little bit of water, pick your spots, like maybe up here. Use your finger to blend that or a paper towel. Let's see, how about right in here? Sure, why not? Now you wanna do the blend rather quickly, right? You don't want it to dry on you. So really quickly, as soon as you put that paint down, do something like that. Okay, so let me do that again. I'm gonna come up, let's see, up here maybe. Take my paper towel, slightly, go right over the top. Okay, I like that, I like that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is back to the foam. Just grabbing some white on my messy plate here. And right here on the edge of the beach, I'm going to overlap a little bit the water and the sand. Coming across, same process as what I did up in here. Okay, doing a little swirly, swirly action as I come across. Again, I'm overlapping both the sand and the water. So watch my turtle fin. And I'm going to just go across. Oh, I was mentioning, I'm going to be out updating the uh, event calendar later today, adding the, uh, got to add the monarch butterfly painting to it. And then I've got the dinosaur painting that I'm going to be adding to it. And then the sun moon one that I've yet to create the painting for, but I'll be adding that to it as well. And then I'll be sending, I'll be posting it, but I'll be emailing it out to everyone that's on the calendar email list. If you guys are interested in getting on that, send me, a, send me an email to paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. Exactly how the name on both Facebook and YouTube is spelled, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. And I'll get you on the list. And the reason I started that is a lot of, I was getting lots of messages from people saying, Hey, Jesse, I never, I don't get the notifications when you post events to Facebook. Um, you know, so what I did is I created a, an email list for the calendar. Yeah, like I said, and I'll, I just mass email it out to everybody on the email list. Of course, you don't get, you don't see each other's emails or anything like that. But all right. Okay. Now. A lot of what I did here at the beginning with the white is pretty dry, so I'm just gonna scoop up a little bit more white here again, still using same process. Don't need a lot of paint though. Now I'm gonna use the corner of the brush, one of the corners here, like this one here. And I'm just gonna use that to add little spots of more intense white. Just here and there. Again, there's a little bit of a randomness in this. Okay.
There we go. Yes, Christine. Fingers are definitely amazing for blending. You'll be okay, Rose. You've turned out quite a few awesome paintings. So I know you'll be okay. Take a little time with it. You got it, Angel. But all right. Take a little bit there, take a little time. We're not done. We're not done adding detail to the water. Once we come in and add detail to the sand and uh, we're gonna actually start with the um, turtles here in just a little bit. We're gonna start adding color to the turtles. Then we'll come in and start adding more detail to the sand. Um, of course, we've got the finger, the footprints, the little princes are going across the sand. We've got a little seashell and then a starfish and whatever else you wanna add. Okay, whatever else you feel like adding to your painting, um, it's up to you. Like I said, I always, I always um, encourage people to get creative with their piece. Make it however you'd like. Okay, maybe yours has a a, a dolphin, <laughs> a washed up dolphin on the side of the on the side of the beach. Now that'd be a little morbid, but it is, it is your painting, right? So make it, make it however you'd like, but all right, 30 seconds. And we're going to start, we're actually going to start adding some color. We're going to start talking about the turtles. We're going to start adding some color there. And I am going to start with green turtles here, or at least one of them is going to be green. So let me get that color on my plate. The green that I'm going to be starting with basic green. Um, I could, Tint it with yellow or other colors to change the variation in it. So maybe a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow. Now the green that I used here on the original is kind of a fluorescent green. I do have some of that on my table in case I decide to use it. But uh, basic green. All right. Just cleaning up my brush here. I am going to be using the same brush that I just used a moment ago. My number 10 flat. All right, here we go. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this green. Okay, again, just a basic green. Maybe I'll lighten it up a little bit. I'm just gonna bring it over to the side of my plate. Add some yellow to it. The yellow can make it kind of fluorescent or, um, kind of a lime green color, it just depends on what you're looking for. Now I've got all these pencil lines in here and I wanna still be able to see them peek in through my paint, peek out through my paint in between my paint. So I'm gonna do this, I'm just gonna paint in between these. If I paint over them, I might struggle seeing them later. I sometimes will just paint right over my pencil lines as long as I trust that I'm going to be able to see them when I go to do the little outline. So the outlines in that dark blue. Now you don't have to outline yours. You don't really need to. But if you decide to do the outlining like I've got on mine, you want to see your pencil lines. Now I'm using a fairly large brush for this step. I could switch over to a smaller flat brush or a filbert. If I do get, if it becomes a little too difficult to do this with this bigger brush, then I'll switch over. So you, that is one way to gauge as you're going through painting on something, the brush you're using doesn't seem to be cutting it. It's too large, too small, etc., or it's making your job a little bit more difficult than it should be, switch brushes. Yeah, I'm gonna 
come over to the to this little flipper over here. I'm just going to color it all green. Go right over my pencil line. Other side. Okay. Little back feet. Now I'm carefully going to do the tail. There we go. I'm deciding whether I'm going to do the outer edge of the, of the shell in green. We'll see here in a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my small, my little number four filbert. Okay. So I can work on that, the head part. Now, what's cool about the filberts, they have a rounded edge. And it makes it easy to paint on the inside of curved areas like the head okay, or the eyeballs, right, where the eyes are. But if you don't have one of these, don't worry about it. If all you've got is a flat brush, small flat brush, or even a small round brush, not that small, but a, a you know, nice little round brush, you can, you can use that instead. Use what you got, make the best of it. And if you plan on continue painting, we'll just, you know, grab a, Start adding to your tools, start adding to your brushes little by little. You can get a bunch of cool variety packs, pretty cheap. Now, I wouldn't recommend really super cheap brushes because if you want to, you want to, you want to have decent brushes, it will make your job a lot easier, more enjoyable. Your, your journey and learning how to paint will be more enjoyable if you have a nice set of brushes. Not saying go out and buy, you know, super expensive set, but you can got, buy a pretty decent set for 10 to 20 bucks. One that's going to get you through uh, most of your paintings. No problem. Okay. But there we go. What's up, Cameron? Yeah. Where have you been? Yep. Cheap brushes shed. That's right. If you go too cheap on your brushes, you're going to have problems, okay? Cheap brushes, as Christine said, they shed, meaning, you know, the little hairs come out. Uh, they, they warp very quickly. They don't last very long. So you want to get, besides that, you know, besides the shedding problems and, and other things, you want to be able to enjoy the process, you know, your brush strokes. A good brush will help you with your brush strokes. It'll help you create as opposed to hinder your process okay so anyway if you're new to painting and you've got you know a basic set of brushes and maybe you're you know you're liking it and you're thinking about getting some uh some better equipment brushes and paint super important but brushes and but brushes are you know high on that list all right so there's my first um, turtle. And again, I'm sitting here debating if I should make it super colorful. For now, I'm going to go ahead and color in the eyeball. Just going to take some blue, same brush. A little filbert has a nice rounded tip that I could use to carefully paint in the eyeballs. Okay. Now, my other turtles also have blue eyes. So I'm just going to go ahead and. Take a moment and paint those in also. There we go. Okay, good, Tina. Little by little. Okay, the more you do it, the more your brain will begin to adapt to the process. Okay, so take a moment there. And we'll continue with... Our other turtles here. I'm going to decide here. I'm, while I'm deciding what to do with that outer shell, 
outer edge of the shell. Uh, we'll go and start painting the other turtles in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to continue with this turtle on the far right. I'm going to mix a little bit of red and a little bit of orange to create kind of that in-between almost ketchup or fiery red color. So a little bit of red, a little bit of orange. Again, if you want whatever colors you want on your turtles is going to be perfectly fine. If you want to have all green turtles or all blue turtles or all pink, orange, etc., completely up to you. I'm just you know, playing a little bit over here, keeping some of the original colors, but we'll see. I'll like to change things up a little bit. I'm going to try to use the same number 10 inch brush. Number 10 um, flat brush is going to clean it up a little bit in my rinse cup. Want to remove that excess green that's in there now. Just going to squeeze it out. Okay, let me get close to my painting here. So I've got a little bit of red and a little bit of orange sitting there next to each other. Just gonna grab a little, bring, a, bring the red over to the side. A little bit of the orange, mix the two together. Again, it's gonna look kind of a, almost like a fire red, a fire orange, I don't know which, either one I think will work, but same process. I am gonna dip my brush in the water, bring that water over. The orange is really thick. It's more, more of a full, what you call a full body paint. So, just want to add a touch of water to the mixture. And same thing, we're just going to come in here and I'm going to start picking things up a little bit. Don't stress if you're falling behind. Let me switch brushes. Let me grab my little flat brush. You start to fall behind, don't worry about it, right? You have the recorded version that's gonna be available immediately afterwards and go right to that. As soon as we're done. So what's everyone doing over summer? You guys planning on continuing to paint? I know lots of people want to be out outside doing stuff after being uh, in, indoors through COVID. I know lots and lots of people are going to be mostly doing outdoor stuff. But how many of you are planning on continuing to paint? Because I'm going to be here. Again, as I paint this, I'm letting those pencil lines peek through. Also, don't forget, folks, when you're all done, to please send me pictures of your paintings. I like to share them. So what I'll do is over the next day or so, as you guys send those over, I, I save them. And then I do a quick, large batch post where I share all the paintings that I've received. People like to check those out. It's a lot of fun. Lots of people like to go through there and look at theirs and look at what everyone else created. So please be do be sure to send those over to me. You can send them to me on painting with Jesse on Messenger here on Facebook. If you're painting with me on YouTube, you can simply email me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com.
All right. I love seeing how creative you guys get. For a moment, I'm going to switch over to my little skinny round brush, little tiny thing. I'm just going to use this to get the little tail painted in. Okay. And then my the head on my turtle is going to be mostly yellow, but here underneath the neck, or sorry, the neck part, right above the shell, I'm going to go ahead and paint that in orange. So, so here's my edge, right? The edge on the shell, right here at the top. Right above it, I'm going to paint in the neck on my turtle in this orange color. Okay. Okay, now I do know that on this turtle, I'm going to be painting, I'm going to be adding some yellow in there, yellow to the head, and what the heck, I'm going to add some yellow on the edge of that shell. Why, am I, why are my turtles so colorful? Eh, just a choice. When I was making the painting, instead of making them all green or, you know, uh, dark green or drab green or whatever color sea turtles can be, I decided I'd make mine super colorful. So here on the eyes, I gotta be careful. I still see the blue on the eyes a little bit wet. I don't want that to mix in with my paint. Otherwise, it's gonna turn them yellow. Good idea, Christine, good idea. Paint and go to the beach. How about painting at the beach? All right, we're gonna take this yellow and paint the outer edge, because why not? Seems like a cool color combo. So at some point in the next month or so, I'm going to be doing this event right here. I'm going to put this, putting this up on as one of our events. You guys see that there? It's a little paradise island palm tree beach scene. This thing glows under black light. Okay, glows under la black lights and. Um, Really fun to do, nothing too crazy about it. But this one's coming up. Speaking of beach, beach weather. Okay, sitting on your little tropical island on a lounge chair. Somebody's there with you, a couple of palm trees. You guys are checking out the, uh, the beautiful ocean in front of you, maybe drinking some, uh, you know, whatever your favorite beverage is. Okay, let's go over to this one. Okay, we're gonna come over to the little tiny one over to the left. I've got some pink, some fluorescent pink that I'm gonna mix with some red. Now this color here um, is an artist loft color. Originally, it's a it's an iridescent or or a fluorescent pink that they sell, neon almost. And I mixed it with some regular pink, toned it down quite a bit, but it's still pretty fluorescent. Whoops, whoops, too much. I wasn't paying attention when I poured it, and I poured out too much. All good. And I'm going to take some of that same red. I'm going to mix some of that with that red from earlier. Let me see. Back to my little flat brush. Let me take my other brushes and put them over in my, in my little tin here. Whoops, knocking, knocking my glitter bottles over. 
So just gonna clean this up a little. Don't have to clean it up too much. That orange blending in with my pink and red isn't gonna be any kind of problem. But I've got some red right here. I'm gonna scoop up some of my pink. Okay, I bring it over. Again, all this that you see in the background is all old dried paint. So I'm not concerned that those are gonna blend in too much. So just bring some of this pink over. I'm gonna grab a little bit of red. Mix those two together. All right. And I'm going to start with the flippers first. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush in just a bit. Too small a turtle for me to get everything with this big brush. Okay. Let's see, my little, I'm actually gonna use my filbert, where'd you go? Right there. My filbert and my round brush for this step, okay? so. Grab my filbert there. Lots of fun stuff happening here on Painting with Jesse. Again, if you want to check out future events, you go over to the event tab on the main page. I have, I think there's about four more events currently on the schedule, officially on the schedule, but I'll be adding some more later today. Also, Working on creating a membership. Uh, launching in July. Early July is looking like. As long as things continue going well. So be on the lookout for that. If you guys want any. I update Facebook. I should be posting something this later this week. Just kind of updating what's how that's going and what's going to be likely included but that's going to be fun for those of you that want to further their art journey maybe get a little bit more into the technical aspect of painting and drawing or if you just want to do it continue doing it for enjoyment but you want to learn a little bit more you know about uh the technicals, there's things like uh, Q and A's and just more in depth stuff coming soon. But okay, I'm gonna do this outer shell in green. So same kind of fluorescent green that I wanna use. So what was that combination? Yellow and green. So around the edge, oh, I, I gotta do, gotta paint the little head too. Just gonna take this around. Anyway, a lot of fun and exciting things happening. Okay, there's that shell. And then I'm going to do the head in, what the heck, let's leave it pink. A little round brush, more control. Be doing some stuff over Zoom where I can see what you guys are painting for those of you who want to participate in those. I, you can show me what you're painting, I can give you tips, right? Basics on exactly what it is that you're doing. Things like that. Okay. All right, Jesse. 
outer edge and that turtle is going to be light blue. So just going to use my filbert really quickly here. Going to clean it up. No, flat brush. What the heck? A little bit of white, a little bit of blue. Okay. A little bit of white. Scoop that up. Make some light blue. See what this looks like. Little touch of water. What's happening, Kin Kinney? Painting from uh, from Australia. I think, or I think you said you're watching first. Saw your comment just a little bit ago. You said you're watching, and then you're going to paint later. Joining us all the way from uh, from Australia. How cool is that? All right, I kind of like this light blue. I have all these um, neon colors that glow under black light. I'm tempted to add a layer of that on the turtles when I'm all done. We'll see. Okay, cool. Now, back to my round, my little round brush. This one's a zero. This actually, this one's a little zero round brush. But if you've got number three, if you've got um, anything that's pretty tiny, that's tiny, will work. So I'm just going to take my light, my dark blue here. Going to bring it over to the side of my plate. Going to scoop up some water with my brush. Mix that in a little bit. Okay, scoop up that water, bring it over. Now what I'm going to do is this. Oh, the um, membership. It's going to have a kids component and so kids and families. And um, there's going to be an all or older paint, uh, painters component to it. Two paths. So just taking this dark blue, you guys already saw what I'm doing here. I'm just outlining. the design on the inside of my turtles. Okay. What's happening, Heather, from Cairns, Australia? Awesome. Margarita, says King Kinney. Is that what you're going to be drinking this summer? So I'm just taking my blue here and outlining. Inside of my shell. There we go. Okay. Very cool. I'm also going to take this. And I'm going to make so little segments here on the outside of my shell. Just gonna take these little lines across. All right. Also, my little turtle has this part of the fin down here. Uh, 
that over here also. Okay. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and outline a little flipper down here. Little tail too, a little bit. Okay. I'm going to take some of this dark green, dark green, and mix it with some blue just a little bit. It's going to turn into a really dark blue green color. I'm going to take this. Right in here on the neck. Just draw. Just let me do the outline, kind of like that. And then I'm just going to come in here and okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of white, okay? A little bit of white and a touch of green, tiny, tiny bit of green. Just really going to lighten up my green. Maybe a little tiny bit of yellow. Okay, white, green, yellow, just a touch. See, this might be a little too strong, but we'll see. Around the eye. I'll give you guys a close-up here in just a moment. But before I do that, let me fix let me fix my eye a little on the right side. And on the left side. Okay, let me show you guys what I did here. Better if I give you a little close-up, I think. So, so I took that lighter green and kind of created a little um, rounded area around each eye. So now I'm taking some of that green. I'm just going to right down the middle. Just going to minimize all that a bit. Okay. Really light touch. Okay. There we go. I take a little dot of white with my round brush and maybe got a little just notice I've got a little stray thread. Stray bristle on my on my brush that's 
interfering a little tiny bit. We'll fix that in a little. I was adding a little dot here in the center. Yeah, I got a little tiny bristle kind of sticking out. But that's all good. Okay. While I'm at it, I'm just going to come over here, add a little dot here, little dot there. And a little dot on this one. Oh, hold on. I'm going to fix this one's head a little bit. It's a little too pointy. Little twinkle in the eye. That's right. Little twinkle in the eye. I'm going to fix this one. The little head, the head's a little too pointy, I just noticed. For my taste, that still looks like a turtle, I think. But, you know, yeah, no. Just going to go ahead and... Uh, Round it out a little bit more. Covered up the eyes too. It's okay. It's okay. Painting is about making little corrections as you go, right? Just like with drawing and anything else, there's something that you want to uh, switch out a little bit, change up, modify. You can uh, you can do that. Okay, so I just made the head a little bit. So it looks a little more like the other two. Now I'm going to go back, take some of my blue here. Bring the eyes back in. We'll let that dry a little before we come back and add the little whites in the center. But what do we want to do with the outlining in here? On the original, I did kind of a, an aqua green, so I'll probably stick to that. I'm going to mix a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, little touch of white. Increase the value a little. So blue, green, white. Let's see what this is going to look like. Got to make sure I mix enough, though. Don't want to run out partway through. Little touch of water, dip my brush in the water, bring it over, mix that into the paint. Just makes it easier to, to work in little lines. I spin my brush, making the point even skinnier. So let me show that again. I press the brush against the plate and the paint and I spin it as I pull it away. Makes that point nice and skinny. Here we go. I could have done these in yellow too. I think yellow would have been a really cool color to keep um, working those details in with. That orange and yellow is a really cool combina uh, combination. There we go. Let's see. On the inside here. So I place my finger on the canvas, my pinky. Helps stabilize. 
my hand makes it easier to make these long smooth skinny lines if you struggle at all with getting that paint to flow onto the canvas it may be because of you know, the paint thickness so you can add a bit of water to thin that out and it should make the process a little smoother all right same brush i'm just going to clean it up really quickly going to take some orange whoops straight orange almost dumped my paper plate on myself just going to take some of this orange just going to come up here give my little turtle some dots look at that little turtle little dots on its back of its head what's happening Heidi sounds good fantastic send me a paint send me a picture of your painting okay so for those of you that are new to the page I have about a hundred recorded sessions and they're all available uh, under the live tab here on the main painting with Jesse page. Now, eventually I'm going to be removing those and putting them, I think into the membership. So just a little bit of a heads up, but right now they are accessible to everyone. All right, this little guy over here, what colors are we going to make this in here? Um, you know what? I'm going to go with blue. Keep it simple. The dark blue that we used for our base color blue. Okay, our base blue is that dark blue that we used in the water that we used in there. I'm just going to go ahead and use that for our little guy. There are uh, about 30 or 40 kid centric videos in that collection and about 60 with an older audience in mind but whatever your age is you could try any of them i always recommend practicing with different levels of difficulty If you always stick to easy ones, you won't push yourself as much and you won't learn as quickly. You can become an expert at painting really easy paintings, right? Relatively speaking, what's easy to one person may not be easy to somebody else, but what I mean is to you, and that's okay if that's what you want, you know, some simple easy paintings but you won't you won't push yourself you won't grow it's the harder frustrating paintings when you experience a little bit of frustration those are the ones that are going to help you grow oh here we go a little segment little lines i didn't do those on that turtle i'll do those here in just a moment these little segments around the outside of the shell These little guys, these little lines in here. Okay, kind of like the ones on that shelf. Got to do those for our little orange one. Just cleaning up my brush a bit. Mixing more of that red orange color. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take a step back here for a moment, look at my painting from a distance. So 
As far as that membership, Heidi, and somebody else asked the question the other day. I noticed it when I was going through the I sometimes will go back through the live sessions and quickly look through comments, see if there's anything that I missed. Um, but the membership for the founding member launch, which is going to be starting sometime in July, again, early in July is what, what it's looking like right now, is gonna it's gonna be $20. 20, 20 or 22 bucks. I'm thinking probably $20. Um, but you're gonna get you're gonna get quite a bit, and I'm still deciding all the components to it. Uh, there's gonna be QA sessions. Like I said, Zoom, uh, there's going to be components on Zoom. And you don't have to participate in everything. Everything, of course, is always optional. Um, there's going to be more, uh, more of the technical aspects of painting, nothing overwhelming. We take those little by little. Everything's always in small bites, bite-sized uh, sessions so that you have fun while you're learning. But color theory, things like color theory, more drawing, uh, so still deciding on all the components for this membership. But the founding member launch will be sometime in July, like I said. Uh, the price will go up on other launches. Again, more detail will be uh, coming up here pretty soon. But, I'm, but I am leaning to $20 a month uh, for that initial launch. And then um, we'll go from there. At the beginning, there's going to be stuff that I'm still tweaking but there's going to be a private Facebook group for that, but there's also going to, going to be a website component to that where you're going to be able to watch the videos on either platform, website or Facebook. And of course, as a member, you'll have access to exclusive content and that kind of stuff. But more details to come on that. Uh, and, um, you know, definitely I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. It's just going to have a lot more of what we already do uh, with extras in there, more, more, uh, more access to me, more sessions where we talk about things like shading, um, uh, technicals, but lots of technicals, but with fun, keeping everything nice and fun and lighthearted. So again, as, as, um, more things develop, I will talk about it some more. I'll be posting something about it over the next, uh, day or so. So um, yeah, be on the lookout for that. Okay. There you go, Kinkini. There you go. For in time for your birthday, huh? Woo. But all right. So a little take a little step back for the moment. I'm going to stop uh, working on the turtles. I'm going to go ahead and come in and uh, add in details to the sand. I'm just going to add another layer of what we just did. So remember the earlier, uh, the earlier colors that we used for the sand. We used white, yellow, and brown. Okay. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you so much. Yeah, it should be should be nice and fun. Looking definitely looking forward to a little bit of relaxing time, and uh, yeah, visiting places that I've been wanting to visit for quite some time. So. On this next step, we're going to mix some of the same color, a little bit of white. This time I'm going to use a little less paint. So a little less white. Okay, I'll show you here in a second what the mixture is going to look like. So I'm just pouring out some white. And the original yellow that I've got on my palette's a little bit muddied. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pour out some more yellow. Okay. So I've got my white. Okay. I've got some yellow. I'm just going to scoop those. A little bit of white and then blend that in with the yellow. Okay, now I'm gonna grab a little bit more brown than I did than I did earlier. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix that in. So this is not the exact same color as what I had originally. Okay, a little bit swirly. It's a little darker in this case. Let's make it a little swirly. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to have very little paint on my brush. Okay. Little bit of paint on the brush. Now I'm going to come in here. 
and then lightly I'm feathering in this brown. And again, because the colors aren't perfectly blended, I can see a little bit of all three colors kind of peeking through. Well, not so much the white, variations of yellow, variations of the brown. Okay, right in here. Anyway, lots of community in the membership. We'll, uh, for those of you that want, I can review your paintings, you know, give you individual tips, things like that. It, within reason, right? It, it just really depends on, uh, on, um, what actually ends up being in the painting in the membership, but that is the idea. If you want to grow as an artist or you simply want to continue painting, if you, maybe your, your goal is to uh, open up a little Etsy store where you paint cute little paintings and um, you know sell them online. Maybe you want to learn how to... Uh, just refine, refine your paintings, get really, really good at, at uh, the technicals. A little bit, little bit for everyone. I think primarily the goal, especially at the beginning, is going to be uh, the, the membership is going to be mostly for people at the early to intermediate stages of painting. But anyway. Still pretty early, I'm not totally, uh, I'm still in the planning stages, so stay tuned for what's going to be in that, for those of you that are interested. I also did start a, um, a mailing list for those that, want, that are interested, in getting more information as I, as, I, as I develop it, I'll be adding the details to Facebook, but again, not everyone gets to see everything that jumps on the page. So if you want to stay up to date, just send me a message of painting with Jesse. Say, hey, Jesse, I'd like to hear more about it as you develop it. If you could add me to the, to the list, that'd be great. And then again, as I, as I roll stuff out, as I update, I can send you an email. And that way makes it easier for you to decide if you'd like to take part. Like I said, I'm pretty excited. I've had a few people ask me over the months if there was anything like this that I was, you know, working on. And, that, and it's been something that's been at the back of my mind for a while, but uh, finally going to take some state steps to make it happen. But all right. So again, I'm just going through here and adding a really light layer of this. In just a little bit, I'll be switching brushes, but... The idea is that you have very little paint on your brush and then you lightly feather this onto your canvas. Now I'm using the skinny part of the brush like this and painting again horizontally. So what this does is it gives us a little bit of, uh, of these little streaky lines. Create some streakiness in that brush stroke or in that paint. And it doesn't all have to be the same color, right? You can vary it a little bit. Let me grab a little bit more brown there. So it's being feathered on. I just have to be careful that I don't pick up any of the colors from the turtles and spread that into the into the sand. Or that I don't take this color and paint over my turtles. Sometimes it'll help if you add a little bit of water also. So because everybody uses slightly different paint, um, paint brands, paint types, your results, everybody's results are a little different. 
when I when I do a recommendation on a colors list, I'll say, for example, brown, right, or yellow. But some of you may have a burnt umber brown or a raw umber or maybe your paint kit just says brown. So between those, there's going to be variation of what brown is. So unless I want you to get a very specific color, and so far I think I've only done that on a couple of our painting sessions. I generally give you I generally will give you the generic name for that color. So red, for example, right? Or orange. But there will be variations in our paintings for different reasons, and that's one of them. So I, I added a little bit of water to my mixture. And again, just kind of feathering this through here. Now I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my flat brushes. Okay, one of my smaller flat brushes here. And let's come over. Whoops, I got some blue in there. Don't want that. Let's clean that up. Had a little blue left over in this brush. I don't want that to mix in my paint. So just took a moment to quickly clean that up. Here we go. Now I'm going to take this smaller brush and in between these little smaller areas, just going to go ahead and for some of you, interestingly enough, this is going to be the trickiest part of your painting, especially if you're newer, especially with these uh, more tedious tasks like, you know, creating these brush strokes, working these little areas, these small, in between the small areas. It can be a little tricky. But again, as you're making these little streaks in your sand, it's a light touch. I did, Kinkini. I got those. Those are awesome. You did great on those. I uh, I responded to your email. Um, not sure if maybe you, you didn't get that, but I did. I uh, responded. Those are awesome. So again, folks, if you're on, especially if you're on YouTube, you can do, do it also if you're on uh, Facebook, but email me your paintings. You can email them to me or you can message them to me directly if you're on Facebook via Messenger. Okay, and then uh, then we'll share those. Uh, Catherine Todd, so the email is paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, okay? Paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. What's happening, Ozzy? Ozzy and Dennis, what's up, Dennis? Glad to hear from you guys. Hope you're all doing awesome. I know you guys moved away from California. Hope you're all doing. You're doing great. I like watch. I like following you guys on, on Facebook, and seeing what you're up to. Hope you're doing awesome and amazing. And maybe when you guys come to visit, you guys will let me know. And maybe we'll all meet up for lunch. Say hi to the fam family for me. Say hi to mama for me. All right. So right here around my turtles, just want to make sure that I... So again, I mentioned this at the beginning. Whenever you guys are doing this, whenever you're going to draw... I typically, my choice is that I usually work in the background first and then I draw over that because stuff like this to work it around can be a little tricky. It can be done, but usually requires a few more little steps. 
the important part here is when you're making these little streaks in your sand is that you be thorough that you create them so that you know you don't so that you don't miss any spots if if there were no turtles in there you would just kind of do this all the way across back and forth back and forth and it's a lot easier but with the turtles in the way it's a little you know it's a little bit of a task but like i said it can still be done. Of course, Kinkini, thank you. But anyway, like I said, lots of fun stuff happening here at Painting with Jesse. If you're not already following the page, if you happen to uh, stumble upon this and go, hey, I'm gonna, I want to try that out. Make sure you make sure to uh, like and follow the page if you want to uh, get those notifications. Now, not everybody gets the notifications from Facebook. Like I've said already, uh, the algorithm is such that it can be a little, a little fickle, a little tricky. I get those messages often. We go live and do an event, a session, a painting session. And somebody will say, "Hey, I had no idea you were going live today. How come I'm not getting the alerts anymore?" To which all I can really say is I'm not sure. Sometimes Facebook works that way. All right, almost done here. All right. Okay, so this beach is a little bit darker than that one. I am perfectly fine with that. What we're going to do right now is we're going to add in the little footprints in the sand. Now, we're not done with the turtles, right? We're going to go back to them in a little bit. I just want to make sure I'm thorough with this. Always take a little step back from time to time as you're painting. Take a little step back. Look at your painting from a bit of a distance. This way. You're better able to see The whole thing. Okay, so I'm taking a little step back here. Okay. I like it. Okay. So. I'm just going to go back to my big brush here for a moment. Okay. And I'm just going to come in here before I start working on those little footprints moving across the sand. I'm just going to come in here and lightly feather some of these areas in a little. Setting one more layer of color of... Uh, and it's just really random. I don't have to do the whole thing. Just here and there, I'm adding little streaks. I can see here around this little turtle, I have to work in some of these, some of the sand a little bit better, but I can come back and do that later. So just going through here and uh, Now, again, I just want to remind everyone, we ideally on something like this, especially if you're painting by yourself, you would do your background first and then draw everything in. You, you would take it all into consideration. Go, okay, what am I working with? I'm making sand. I'm, I'm um, you know, I need this. I need to be able to make these long brush strokes. And it's just an easier process if you do that first and then draw over the top and then paint your turtles. Just a little less, a little less work. But all right, there's that. 
for now anyway. We can always come back and refine later. Hi, Rizia. How are you? Sounds good, Nancy. Yep. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Okay. Okay. Here's what we're going to do now. We're going to go ahead and create the little footprints in the sand. I'm switching over to my little flat brush. Okay. This little guy right here. Now, these are a little darker, so I'm going to take a little bit more brown in my mixture. It's a similar mixture to what we did with the sand earlier, but it's going to have a little bit more brown. So right here on my plate, just making my mixture of yellow, brown, and white, with a little bit more brown in it. Okay. Now, just going to come in here. I'm going to start with this little guy down here. Let me test it out first. Make sure you can see the sand. Make it dark enough. It's a little transparent paint also, so thin it out. You don't want to. You don't want a whole bunch of really thick paint on your brush. The main thing is that you can see it. So right here, I'm going to start with these guys right here. You're just going to take your brush. Let me, let me go close. So here, what, I, what I'm doing with the brush here, I'm going to go like this. Press it down and then just brush to the side. Okay, kind of like that. As the little, little guy's going across the beach, he's leaving his little footprints. Okay, those are the back feet. You could also maybe even do like the little tail line if he's dragging his tail. If his tail's long enough, <clears throat> you could do like a little marks for do a little marks for the for the tail. But let me go ahead and put the canvas back onto the easel for the for the long flippers in the front. Press down, come over. Give you a little close up here in a moment. Maybe there's a couple of those. Okay. So let me bring it over here like this. So I, I'm, again, I'm using my, my little flat brush, my, little, my number six. I just press down, pull over. Okay, maybe different directions, right? Something like that. You just need a few of them. Big guy, press down, come across. We're doing the little back feet first. Again, as long as you're using a color that's slightly darker, you're, you're going to be okay. Okay. The edges are not perfectly defined because, you know, they're, as it's moving across that sand, it's pushing. So the edges aren't super defined. They're just kind of rough. I added the dragonfly glaze to the water. It gives the water the same glistening look. Awesome, Rose. Make sure you send the picture. I'd like to check that out. All right, up here. There's one. Come across, maybe this one kind of comes down this way, like this. Okay, right here. Right here. 
Now these are going to overlap a little, right? The ones that I create for this one and this one. They're going to overlap just a little bit. All right. Let's go with this one now. Once you get the hang of this, it's a pretty simple process. Again, very, whoops, I mixed in some blue here. Don't want that. You wanna make sure that you have very little paint on your brush. There's a transparent nature to the footprints as they go across that sand, as you add them over the top of that sand. Okay, see a little flipper over here. Okay, and then maybe If you wanted to make little flippers, or sorry, the um, little marks for the for the tail, like I do here on the original, if you notice, little tail's also leaving a little trail on the big ones. The little tail happens to touch down a little bit, maybe, and maybe they're a little spaced out. You could also add a little bit of water to your mixture, got a little water, and just kind of, so I just took my brush, dip, dip in, the, in the water just a little tiny bit, bring some of that over, and then just fi find little spots within your tracks. Just adds a different color. In there that blends in with that original color. Giving some nice variation. That can give your tracks a little bit of a, a little bit of dimension. Sounds good. Sounds good, um, Rose. It says, okay, you're got it. Your dogs are demanding attention. I hear you. What's up, Adriana? Okay. So I'm going to take a moment to draw in a little seashell over to the side. I'm just going to use my little round brush, little skinny thing. Clean that up a little. It's got some orange in it. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of, uh, I'm going to start with white. Mostly white. Okay. Let me draw that. So I've got a seashell. My seashell's over here. It's kind of pointy. On one end, opens up, comes over. This side's a little wiggled. So there's a little wiggly line over the top right here. And I'm just gonna brush like this back and forth. Okay, now I'm gonna take now I'm going to take some brown, same brush, and I'm going to do a little outline. Okay, my non-painting hand sits on my table like this, and okay. On the inside, we're just going to make 
little tiny thin lines that go out like that. Again, don't worry if you're falling behind. This is being recorded. As soon as I'm done posting the video, you can go back and watch the recorded session. There's that little seashell hanging out right there next to our little turtle. I'm gonna take the same brush when you grab a little bit more white. Maybe back here on the base, we got a little area where there's more white. Okay, it's gonna take a little bit of this white and streak it in. The little areas of extra white that I'm adding, these little lines are giving the seashell a little extra dimension, okay? The variation in those colors. And then maybe I'm just gonna come in here and add a few extra little lines in there. There's our little seashell. Sounds good, Adriana, you already know. You can always come back in here and paint it whenever you'd like. Okay, starfish, same white color. You could use orange if you want. You could use whatever, pink. Maybe your starfish is pink. But I'm gonna take my little brush here, add a little, little bit of water to my paint. So I'm gonna start with the little point on top. Okay, there's that. Each side. Every time I do starfish now, it reminds me of Patrick from uh, SpongeBob. Okay, there's the bottom left, and then one more. Okay, then outline it in brown. Come around. Oops, picked up some blue there. It's gonna happen from time to time. Pick up the wrong color, it's okay. Easy to fix. You can either wipe it off or paint over it. If you can cover it up, cool. If not, take a paper towel with a little bit of water and you should be able to wipe that away. So a little paper towel with some water on it. Voila. Just have to redo that edge. Okay. Back to my white. Ooh, still got some blue in that paint. It's all right.
using my finger here. Wow, there's, that's a lot of blue in there. Back to my paper towel with a little bit of water, just kind of wipe that off. There we go. There we go. There's our little starfish. Now I'm going to mute the white that's in there a little bit. I could leave it really light, white like that. Actually, I kind of like that. Hold on. Let me let me take a little step back. Yeah, I'm going to leave that. I like it. I like it stark white like that. I could go in there and mute it a bit by adding some brown or some orange and just maybe working around the edges a little bit. But I, I like that. So I'm going to leave it. Taking a little step back, looking at my painting from a distance. We still have this shimmering. We got some uh, some glitter that we'll be adding. Um, just gonna add a little bit of a touch ups to the turtles here in just a moment. I am going to add glitter to the the turtles as well. I have some sequins that I might add. I'm not sure yet. I know I put. The, I think I put them in the uh, in the supplies list. However, we'll see. We'll see here towards the end. I'll show you how to add them at least for those of you that might have them. I'll show you how to add them. It's a pretty easy process, but uh, really quickly what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through and uh, start making some refinements to the colors here on this shell, and then maybe the edges. I might change up, change up the colors on the edges a little bit, but we'll see. We'll decide here in just a moment. What's happening, Brenda? How are you? What's up, Penny? Patrick. Patrick is a crazy guy. Okay, I'm gonna take my filbert, little filbert here. I'm gonna grab some green, just dark green. Don't need a lot of it. Little bit, just gonna come in here and around my edges here to give my turtle a little bit of dimension, the shell. I'm gonna add some of this right around the outside edge. Just gonna go across like this. Good, Brenda. Glad to hear. Hope you're getting a lot of work done. <laughs> there we go. So all the way around. And I'm just going to do this to, the, to this uh, bigger turtle. I feel like... The green on it is a little too transparent, so this is going to help give it a little bit of dimension, like I said. Uh, makes the shell look a little bit rounder. 3D, a little more 3D. So I'm just taking this darker green and just working my way around the outer edge. Okay. Okay, and then I'm also going to take some of this green. I'm going to put it down here on the little on the little uh, back feet. Same, uh, similar process, just making them a little darker. Okay, maybe here at the top.
Okay. Okay, let me take a step back and look at what I've got. Okay, I like it. Things are looking pretty good, pretty, pretty much the way I'd like them to look at this stage. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit more yellow, same brush, just cleaning it up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to use a straight yellow. Just going to grab this yellow. What I'm going to do is around here on my uh, the edge of my turtle, a little medium-sized turtle. Just going to go through and refine the edge a little bit, paint over some pencil lines that I could see. I am going to use glitter over the top of these areas of the turtle, this edge, so that's going to clean up any of those pencil lines that I might still be able to see coming through. If any of you are not gonna be adding glitter and you have your pencil lines that you can see, you just have to paint over them enough so you don't see them. Sometimes it takes one, two, three extra layers to do, to do so, but eventually you will get rid of those pencil lines by painting right over the top. Okay, so over here with my green, so this is more of that light green, so a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green, mix the two together. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of green, creates kind of a lime or even fluorescent green. I've got those blue lines that I um, painted around the edges on my little turtle. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint right over that. No big deal. What I can't forget to do is make the little tiny dots for the eyes on the little guy. So scoop in some white. Okay. And then give him my little turtle. Little touch of white, reflective light coming off those. Sounds good, Kinkini. Got to get your gym on, huh? I hear you. Okay. So work on that for just a moment. Oh, one more touch. One more little touch of yellow. Right up here. There we go. Let me grab my little sequins here. My sequins, why does that sound weird? Let me, <laughs> let me grab my, my little sequins and I'm gonna show you guys how to add those to the turtles. Give me one sec. Okay, so, so I've got these little, little bag of sequins. Now these are a little larger than what I hope to find. I used to have a bunch of little small ones, but these will do, especially for the big turtle. Right? They come in different colors. I'm just going to show you how to do a couple of them for those of you that have something like this or for those of you that would like to add something like this in the future. So you can use like a stick. Oops. You can use a stick of glue or you can use some of the glitter. If you guys have glitter paint, um, you know, all that is is glitter floating around in glue. And so what you can do is simply do what I'm about to do. So I've got some green glitter right here. Doesn't The color doesn't really matter. You're going to be putting this on the back of your, uh, your little sequins. You could use gold. You could use whatever color you've got. Again, if you've got a glue stick, use a glue stick. So... Let's say, for example, that I had some sequins here that I wanted to add to my turtles. I'm just going to do a couple of these, and I'm going to get into the actual, actually painting glitter on your, on your uh, background. Okay, so just taking some of the glitter and I'm bringing it over 
the glue glitter. It's this stuff here. Okay. I just dip the back of my brush right into it, into the little bottle. I'll do this a few times. Wherever I'm going to add a little sequin. I'm just bring some of this glue glitter over. Then what I'll do, I can do it with my hands like this, where I just grab a piece, a little sequin, and I come over and I just press it right on to my little turtle. Okay. Because these, these, these sequins are larger, it's easy for me to do that. If you have those little tiny sequins, those smaller bits, then you would use you would use your brush or your, yeah, the back handle of your brush. Let's say, for example, that I've got some glue right here. I would take my brush. I would barely touch one of the sequins. And I got the little sequin on the tip uh, or the handle, the back of the handle. I come over and I transfer it over. So you can do this all the way around your turtles, depending on the color that you've got. And you start, you know, you create a really cool design. Uh, paint will still hold. Paint, you can do it with paint. Uh, penny. Yeah, paint will work also. So the thing is, though, if you're using paint or something that isn't, doesn't hold immediately, you can you just make sure your canvas is flat okay, on a table. And then, yes, paint will work. So if you put a little bit of a dab of wet paint, Put the sequin right over the top of that. Absolutely. It will hold. Now, I did all, all yellow sequins there. You don't have to use the same color. You can use green or reds, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So, so I'm going to move on to the water, add glitter to the water, and then maybe some glitter to the turtles. And then if I, there's a little more time, I'll come back and add those, uh, some more sequins. Give me one second. Let me grab my blue glitter. Hold on one second. So paint, glue stick, glitter that floats around. You know, that glitter that, like what I just showed you that floats around in glue. You can use any of those. You just have to, you know, might have to get a little creative. No pun intended. So I've got this blue glitter. <clears throat> okay, this is that glitter that I often use. It's uh, from, uh, from Folk Art. It's called Glitterific. And then I've got I've got a light one and I've got a darker one. I think I'm going to stick with the uh, I'll stick with the light one. For those of you that have never used glue or glitter glue, there are different types of this stuff out there. This isn't the only brand. My favorite one and the one that I used on the original is called uh, Craft Twinkles. I don't have any of that at the moment, so I'm going to use this glitterific stuff. Works. Kind of similar. The glitterific stuff tends to be a little bit thicker. There you go, King Kinney. That's right. You can find this stuff pretty cheap or products that are similar to it pretty cheap. Places like Walmart. Um, I've seen them at craft stores. I've seen them at uh, even 99 cent store places, you know, places like that, discount stores. So I've got. A big old gob of this glitter right on my brush. What I'm going to do with this, and all I did is scooped it. I stuck my brush right into the bottle itself. You want to make sure your, your brush is relatively clean. You don't want any wet paint that's going to mix into your glitter. And you're going to apply it first to the areas that are 
dry. Or do all the areas that are dry first. You don't want to add this stuff over wet paint because it can get messy and cloudy. It'll dull your glitter a bit. I'll show you guys what this looks like up close here in just a moment. Pretty cool. Nice little effects. This is a really nice way to accent a painting. If there's areas in your painting that maybe you don't like, some area that you know you're not really happy with, you can take some of this glitter and put it right over the top and you fix problem areas right up. Okay, I'm also going to take some of this and I'm going to bring it down in here. I'm, I'm concentrating on the darker areas. Some people will choose to add it everywhere. You can. You can put glitter wherever you want. But I choose to concentrate. Usually, I'll, I'll put it under on a little accent as accents on areas that are already... Uh, either darker or brighter on the original painting. These come in different colors. You've got reds, <clears throat> pinks, crystal or pearl color, silver, gold. I could also take some of this instead of the sequins. I can just add it around the edges of my little turtles. Okay, just like that. So let me give you a close up of what that water looks like with all of this glitter. So look at that, <clears throat> okay? Very, very cool touches. So Kinkini, the blue in the background, all I did was um, I used this basic flow acrylic paint, blue from Artist Loft. And all this that I made back there is a combination of white. And I used Anita's, not that this matters too much, you could use Artist Loft white paint paint also but this is also a very flowy acrylic paint and it is all purpose i picked this up at uh hobby lobby uh between those two that blue the blue and the white is what i created all those different variations in that water okay but all right let's continue what i'm going to do now i've got some i've got some light green i'm going to use for my turtle light green glitter let me switch brushes here let me grab these guys and move them over. So back to my filbert. Just scooping up this green stuff right here, green glitter. I'm just coming in. And, uh, now I could do just the center if I want. I could do all the segments around my turtle here. So this ends up, this kind of painting ends up being more of a multimedia, right? Because we're introducing glitter and um, the sequins. So this green one also, this one's called Neon Green. I believe it's Neon Green. It's also from Glitterific. Glitterific from Full Cart. Now let me give you guys a close-up on that. 
Look at our turtle there. Look how shiny and glittery that is. Okay. Very, very cool. I can take I can take red glitter. I have a red glitter. Okay. It actually has some orange bits in there also. And I can take this and put it on my little orange one. So let's do that. Same brush, my small filbert, cleaning it up a little bit, removing that extra, um, or any of that green. Just gonna come in here. Let's okay. so maybe our little flipper get some too. Little feet. What about our little guy? I'm going to take, for our little guy, I'm going to take some of this uh, pearl glitter. This one's DecoArt Galaxy Glitter. Yeah, it uh, has a really pearlescent color to it. If you wanted to, you could put glitter on your starfish, on the shell, on the seashell over here, wherever you want. Okay. Okay. Lots of glitter everywhere. How cool is that? Let me go ahead and continue. I'm going to finish up with the sequins here really quickly. I'm only going to add them to the big guy here. I'm not going to add any to the little ones. So continue. Same thing. Just going to. Use the back handle. Put my brush here too. So again, glue stick, paint, glitter paint. Any of those will work. I can change up the color if I'd like. I'm moving those around to create a little bit of variety. You guys weren't here when I talked about what's coming next. Stick around here as far as the events that are, you know, on the calendar. The calendar is not updated at the moment. I'll be updating it later today and posting it by tomorrow. I'll be sending it out to those of you on the uh, calendar email list. But if you guys missed the beginning, oh, there we go. That's good. I think I got them all. I'll show you guys what's coming up here in just a bit. But, all right, look at those. Look at that, the sequins all around my little turtle there. And of course, you could do the same thing on those other ones. Maybe smaller sequins. But look at all glitterized. I've got one more thing I'm going to do here. I've got that pearl color that I used on the little guy. I'm going to use that to um, add some to the water, to the foam in the water, right? The white parts. So it's going to come in here.
little extra touch. Okay. Take a look. <clears throat> now, if I really wanted to, <clears throat> I can make little refinements here and there. I can come in with the sand color and just make sure that I tighten things up around the edges of my turtles. Right. Um, that's one thing I could do. Maybe I could come into the water before the glitter. I would come in and add just a few more little touches here and there to maybe give it a little bit more variation. But I don't have to do that. I can take a little step back here. And if I'm pleased with it, I can call it done after I sign it. And after I flip it over and paint the bottom edge the same color as the sand. Now, a note on that, I just want to remind you, not everyone likes to paint their edges on their canvases, and either process is okay. Okay, you can leave them stark white, or you can paint them. Either way is fine. But I'm going to go ahead and sign mine down here at the bottom. I like to sign with my last name. Okay, just like that. Like I said, and I won't do it now, but I would flip it over on its head, paint that bottom edge to match, and then we're good to go, okay? That is pretty much the end of that. I do want to thank everyone for hanging out with me once again today. You guys are all awesome. Lots of fun stuff coming up to Painting with Jesse. I know I keep saying that, uh, but... I'm gonna share my screen here really quickly for those of you that weren't here, weren't here at the beginning. Let me jump over to my Facebook page here. Share screen, yes. So what I'm about to show you is the events coming up over the next um, few weeks. So here at the top, this is how you can always find the events on Painting with Jesse, on the main Painting with Jesse page on Facebook, there's these tabs, these categories that sit here, home, live, videos, groups, and more. If I click on this more like that, it gives us this drop down box right here under events. If I click on that, it'll show me anything that's scheduled in the near future. For example, Wednesday, June 23rd is the next, next officially scheduled uh, event. I'm going to be on vacation here over the next few days and I am planning on doing a live stream live stream in between now and June 23rd. I'll be update, updating the calendar later like I was mentioning. But the next one that's officially on the calendar is this one for June 23rd. If I want more information, I can click on it. It'll bring up the actual event. This is what we've got to paint on Wednesday, June 23rd, a day or two after I get back from vacation, by the way. So I'll be nice and refreshed and uh, fully energized. But that's what we're painting the hope tree. Now, if you scroll down, there's two tabs here, about, and then there's this one that says discussion. I always put my templates. If there's going to be a template, this one does not have a template, a uh, traceable or template under the, under the discussion board. Okay, you click on the discussion board. You can also make comments and such there. So if I click on it, it brings us to here. You could post, you can comment on here. There aren't any comments at the moment, but here's how you would add a post. Click on it, questions, etc. But under the About tab is how you find out the details here. See where it says See More? If I click on that, it's going to give me all of the details to the event. Colors, brushes, surfaces, all that good stuff. Okay, it's all right in here. Okay, but anyway, let's back up. Let me go back here to the page that we were at before. Thursday, June 24th, the day after the Hope Tree. I've got this kid-centric event 
where I teach you how to draw and how to paint your own little dinosaurs, a little brontosaurus slash brachiosaurus slash, uh, I don't know, stegosaurus. <laughs> but you get to draw your own little dinosaur, and then I teach you how to paint it all in the same session. Should take about an hour to do. Same thing. Click on the event details to find out more on that one. So that's June 24th. Then what do we got after that? The last scheduled event currently on the calendar is Wednesday, June 30th. I will teach you how to create this really cool uh, prickly pear cactus with bees on it. Now, I'm likely going to change the background color on mine to make that cactus stand out. Maybe I'm going to paint that in yellow or orange or a more subtle blue. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to be changing the color on, on the new one that I'm going to be painting. I have that here in my studio somewhere, but I'm going to be painting the new one in a different color. So that's Wednesday, June 30th. Like I said, I will be updating the calendar over the next, I'll be updating it today and posting it sometime tomorrow. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be trying to stream two times from my vacation. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, did I share the screen? Oh no, I didn't share the screen. Or did I? I thought I shared it. Sorry if I did not. I was talking to myself. <laughs> that whole time I was talking to myself thinking I'm guiding you guys through this. It looks like um, StreamYard didn't allow me to share it. Anyhow, sorry guys, it looks like it didn't share it. But okay, well, we'll try it again next time. <laughs> we'll try it again next time. Wow. Didn't even realize it didn't work until I came back to StreamYard. I should have checked first. I'm new to sharing screens, so I apologize about that. But anyway, we'll do it again next time. But all right, everyone, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it as always. I hope to see you guys next week uh, when I do my live streaming from vacation. As long as everything goes well, you'll see me on here. Any questions, comments, send them to me either on Painting with Jesse at gmail.com here on Messenger on Facebook. You can also put comments in on the under the video on YouTube. But uh, anyway, also do not forget to send me pictures of your paintings. Okay. Send those over to me. I would greatly appreciate it. But all right, everyone, have an awesome rest of the day. I will see you guys all very soon. Thank you all once again. Time to end the broadcast. Bye now.